As you might have noticed, power supplies and power adapters are now a lot smaller and lighter than ever before. And in today's video, we're going to take a look at why that is. So I thought to myself, what better way to learn about power supplies than to actually open up some power supplies and have a look inside so that we can actually see what's going on. But then, of course, we need some examples. We need an example of an old fashioned power supply and an example of a modern power supply. And so representing the modern power supply, we have this little um, adapter that you can use to charge a phone or a tablet. And representing the old fashioned power supply, we've got a real piece of retro equipment over here, which is my old power supply for powering um, model railways. So uh, let's take a look inside these, shall we? So the first thing that I should point out about these two power supplies is that they're actually quite similar uh, in terms of power output. So this big one is about 15 watts or so, and this one is around 10 watts. So in terms of output capacity, these are extremely similar, despite the fact that this one is significantly smaller and also much lighter than this guy. And that's because they work in a different way. So let's take a look at the old fashioned power supply first. So what this does is it's pretty straightforward. We've got high voltage AC power coming in from the wall. Uh, so that's 230 to 240 volt AC goes into it. This converts it into a low voltage DC, which comes out here, which you can then use to power model trains. Or, and this output, I believe, is for uh, lighting systems, but let's not get into that. So that's what it does. Like most power supplies, it takes high voltage AC and then converts it into low voltage DC on the output. Now, this one is a bit funny because it's also got a variable voltage because you need to be able to control the speed of the trains and it can reverse the polarity so that the trains can also drive backwards. Uh, but it doesn't really matter that much for this video. So we're just going to ignore it. Um, we're going to pretend that this is just always at maximum voltage um, and it's just a constant power supply. Okay, so I've already taken out the screws so we can easily take off this cover. So as you can see, we've got the mains power coming in through this cable over here. Then it goes round the back, so it actually goes through this board that you see, and then it connects straight into this big transformer. So this whole big part that you see here with this big coil is a transformer. Now in case you don't know what a transformer is, it's a device that transforms a certain AC voltage into a different AC voltage. So in this case, what the transformer does is it takes the high voltage AC from the mains input from the uh, power outlet and it transforms that into a much lower voltage AC because of course to power the small model trains we need a very low voltage we need around 14 15 volts or so so this transformer transforms 230 or 240 volts down to around 15 volts but then of course at the output we've still got AC it doesn't convert from AC to DC but we do need DC power to power the trains. So what then happens is the output from the transformer is connected to the input of this rectifier over here. So this part with the square plates is a very old fashioned rectifier. And what this rectifier does is it converts the AC power into DC power. So the low voltage AC gets converted into low voltage DC and then it goes to the output over here which you hook up to the uh, the model railway track. And of course it also goes through the uh, this weird reverse polarity switch that we talked about but that doesn't really matter for this video. So to sum up what this power supply does it's very straightforward it takes AC power from the mains it steps it down using a transformer to a lower voltage and then it rectifies that voltage and then you have your DC output. Now a slightly more modern, more advanced design might also have a, a, um, a linear voltage regulator at the end to keep the, to keep the voltage at a nice constant level. Um, 
but for these model railway systems you don't really need that anyway because the voltage is variable um, and it works just fine. So it's a very nice little design, it works really well, but of course it's big. And the main reason it's big and heavy is the transformer. I mean if you look at this thing, what's the biggest component? What's the heaviest component? It's this transformer, right? This takes up the largest amount of space in this power supply, this huge transformer over here. Transformers are just big components, or at least low frequency transformers are big components. You see, this is a very low frequency transformer because it operates at mains power frequency, which is 50 hertz here in Europe. Higher frequency transformers can be made much smaller. Okay, so the higher the frequency of the power, the smaller a transformer can be. So in America, where the mains frequency is actually 60 hertz, transformers are ever so slightly smaller. On airplanes, they often use a power frequency of 400 hertz, which allows them to make tiny transformers, which is of course very good because on an airplane you're always trying to save weight, which means it's nice to have small transformers because a transformer is essentially a big block of metal with some copper coils around it. So you want to minimize the weight, especially on an aircraft. But of course, here we're just stuck with mains frequency, right? Because we need to plug this in, so we're stuck with this big transformer. But then how does this power supply manage to be so incredibly small? Well, let's just crack it open and have a look. I'm going to close this back up. Actually, I'm not going to close this back up. I might need it again. So let's take a look at this one. I've also already unscrewed it. I've actually also removed the USB port because I needed it for some project. Uh, so we can just open it up and have a look. And one thing that you can spot straight away is how tiny this transformer is. You see that? This transformer, compare it to this one. So now, of course, the question is, why is this transformer so small? How can it be so small? Well, the trick that we use is that this transformer is not directly hooked up to the mains power input. So what actually happens is the mains electricity goes into a rectifier. So remember that this one had a rectifier at the end, okay? This one actually has a rectifier at the beginning. You see these four diodes here, that's a rectifier. So we turn the AC mains voltage into a DC voltage first. So we have high voltage DC going into the rest of the circuit instead of high voltage AC, okay? So it immediately gets rectified. And then what we do is we use a device that is hidden underneath this capacitor over here. You can probably not see that very well on camera. It's an automatic switch that can operate incredibly quickly and also does actually operate at an insane rate. So that switch opens and closes maybe 5,000 or 10,000 or even 20,000 times per second. Okay, so this thing is switching the power on and off the DC power, on and off 20,000 times a second. So that's 20 kilohertz, a very high frequency. And this switched DC is then fed into the primary side of this transformer, into the input of the transformer. So instead of feeding the low frequency AC power from an outlet into our transformer, like we did in this guy, we generate this extremely high frequency switch DC and that goes into the transformer. And because the frequency at which the switching is done is so high, we can use a very, very tiny transformer. And then we step down the voltage to the, the value we want, right? We rectify, we smooth, and there we have our output on the end, just like that. Normally, again, there would be a USB port, but I, I had to use that for something else. Now, this is the type of power supply that you find in loads and loads of modern devices. So wall adapters like this, but also uh, laptop chargers, computer power supplies, modern day lab power supplies. Essentially, almost every power supply works this way because it's so nice, so compact, and it also has other advantages. So for example, this kind of power supply, we talked about how a more advanced design might have a, a linear regulator at the end to keep the voltage nice and steady. On this power supply, you don't need a linear regulator at the end. 
because the switching duty cycle that we apply before this transformer can be used to control the output voltage. So the output voltage can be controlled very precisely by messing with how we do the switching over here. And so we no longer need this inefficient voltage regulator at the end. We can just apply some different, uh, different switching frequency or different switching duty cycle if we need a different voltage on the end. Um, so if the voltage at the output um, decreases for some reason, maybe we're drawing lots of current from it, or maybe the input voltage dropped a little bit for some reason, then we can simply compensate for that by increasing the duty cycle of the switching element, um, and we can get the voltage back up to where it should be. So we don't need that weird regulator at the end, which is nice. Another interesting thing is that the input voltage range of these can be absolutely massive. So because we're able to control the output voltage very well by controlling the, the way we do the switching before the transformer, that also means it nearly doesn't matter at all what kind of voltage we feed into it. So this power supply, as you can see is written on it, ranges from 100 all the way up to 240 volts. So you can plug this thing in anywhere in the world. You can plug it in in America, 120 volt AC, works just fine. You can plug it in here in Europe, you can plug it in anywhere you want, and it'll always work. It accepts any voltage in between 100 and probably somewhere like 260 volts even if you want to. So that's also very nice about these kinds of power supplies. Now there are actually more reasons why this kind of power supply is fantastic. There are also reasons why it isn't fantastic and sometimes it's even better in some cases to use an old-fashioned power supply like this. But now at least hopefully you know a little bit more about how they actually work. I hope you've enjoyed this video and of course thank you for watching.